Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm Vincent Legros, uh, Marketing Officer at uh, Mercator Ocean International. And I'm very pleased to welcome you to the debriefing session of the WKO training workshop dedicated uh, to climate data products. So today, this is a debriefing session. Uh, I am around it with WKO experts. They are there to answer all the questions uh, you, you ask uh, during the round two practical session and uh, all the questions you can ask live today. So as usual, uh, you have the chat uh, bottom right of your screen where you can ask as many questions as you need to ask uh, during this debriefing session. All right. Don't forget to add the um, the uh, interrogation points. Okay. So the program of today, uh, Fabrice Messal, a training manager at Mercator Ocean International, and Marta Bertrand, Wikio user support expert, will come back to general question you ask during round one and round two. And it will give you time to, to ask live questions to them, OK? Then we will continue with Chris Stewart, Copernicus Training Officer at ECMWF. He will come back to some question you had uh, concerning the Jupyter Notebook environment. And Amin El Amrani, Satellite Imagery Expert at CS Group, We'll come back um, of some technical issues you could add, uh, you could have had during the session. So to begin, one thing very important, guys, you have to save your work. It means that uh, we provide you a dedicated Jupyter Lab. Okay, this uh, Jupyter Lab will be closed soon. Uh, after a discussion with the expert, we will close this Jupyter Lab uh, the seventh of December. So you will have to download your customized notebook before the 7th of December, not the 5th of December, OK? And upload your customized notebook on your home, OK? Uh, we will provide, uh, at the end of this training, a summary where we will do a step-by-step -step, uh, uh, of how to save your work, OK? So no worries about that. So to begin with you, we would like to launch a live survey uh, to gather feedback from you, the participants, of uh, how you how you you found the um, the practical session. Okay, so I'm launching the survey now. So first question: Did you have time to practice the Jupyter notebook presented during round one? So please, you can answer the question. Yeah. Question two, during the practical session, I had difficulty to use the HDA access to information and the products, clone the Jupyter notebooks from the GitHub to the Jupyter environment, modify the Jupyter notebook for my own purpose and have results, connect to my account, find support information on the website, other but not in the list. Okay, next question about the difficulties of the Jupyter Notebook, I would say that they are a bit too easy, they are a bit too difficult, or they are exercises for all levels of difficulty. About the topic of the Jupyter Notebook, and according to my needs, I found them relevant, useful, interesting, out of the scope. So to improve your material, you should propose ML exercise, tutorial videos for all the Jupyter notebooks, practical exercises on how to use virtual machines, forum to exchange directly with scientific experts during the practical session, a live checkpoint meeting between the round one and round three, or a session to manipulate Jupyter notebooks, download, upload, clone, etc. And uh, to finish, uh, an open question uh, where you can write your comments. So please, uh, we will give we give you some time to answer the question. 
And after, uh, I will be with Chris and Fabrice and Marta to, to comment the results. Thank you. Uh, we give you some time to, to answer the question. Fabrice and Chris, you can come back if you want. Hello, Chris, how are you? Hi, I'm fine, thanks. So, we give you some time to answer the question. Hi, Vincent. Hi, Chris. Hi. Hello, Fabrice. OK, guys, I think we can begin to comment the first question. So did you have time to practice the Jupyter Notebooks presented during round one? So you can see. Sorry, Vincent, I can, I can see the, the results now. Can you see the results now? Uh, not yet. No. OK. I just give them some more time to finish the, the, the okay. survey. Otherwise, we have to to uh, to answer the the survey, but uh, it's not fair. Okay. So for the participants who just uh, arrived now, we have a live survey for the moment. Please feel free to answer or answer the question. This is the debriefing session, so you are here uh, to debrief uh, uh, all together with our experts, our WikiO experts. So we give like more one or two minutes to to you to answer the survey so feel free to answer this survey is uh, it's a way to to collect information about how you you made this uh, practical session and uh, it will be very fruitful for us to uh, to to have this uh, these answers uh, in order to improve our practical material and uh, uh, and also the training format, training workshop format. So thank you, thank you for that. And it, it's a kind of icebreaker to to launch this uh, this session because it's not always easy to start a debriefing session with a, a Q and A session and say, okay, please write your question. So we can start from that, and we will see your your answers. So, hello, Martha, how are you? Thank you, good morning, fine, I'm, I'm good. Um, I see we are waiting for some answers to the survey. Yeah. So, uh, Martha Bertrand, our user support expert, will be the moderator of, the, of this today's session. So, she will manage uh, live question you could you will have uh, during this session display the question on the main screen and our experts will answer okay and she will help uh, Fabrice Messal uh, uh, concerning general question you could have uh, uh, on this training guys what do you think can can I stop the the survey and share the results with you? Uh, for me, it's okay if uh, if you if uh, you can see them, it's it's fine. Okay, guys, I stop I stop the survey and we we are going to debate concerning the answer you provided. Here you are. Can you see? Can you see the results, uh, Fabrice and Chris? Yes. Um, yeah. So I leave you the floor. So uh, there is a seventeen percent of the, uh, the 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 people who answered the the questionnaire 
said they have uh, made some Jupyter notebooks, so it's uh, it's uh, it's good. Uh, a lot of people found it uh, interesting, but they didn't have time. So don't worry for that because okay, the uh, Jupyter Hub dedicated for the practical session uh, will be closed the seventh of uh, December, but. Uh, you can access with your uh, Wikio account to uh, the Jupyter Hub on your on your uh, on your dashboard, and on this Jupyter Hub, uh, you will be able to continue uh, to practice this uh, uh, Jupyter notebooks or to access the GitHub and clone the Jupyter notebooks on your directory. So, don't worry if you didn't have time. The 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 previous uh, weeks, uh, all the material is, is still available on uh, on Wikio and the GitHub. Okay, um, Fabis, I'm not sure if I can see the the results of the survey. Maybe you could um, send me the link or something. Oh, on, your, have... on your main screen, you 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 should uh, you should see the the result now and. Uh, you can scroll. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I see it now. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So during the practical session, I had difficulties too. Okay. The most uh, answer. Clone the Jupyter notebooks from GitHub to Jupyter environment. Modify the Jupyter notebooks for my own purpose, and I have results. Connect to my account. So okay access to information on the product. So to access information to the product on the product directly on the data uh, viewer, uh, you can have information on the, on, the, on the products. And if you need more information, you have the link to access uh, to, the, to the sources of this product. Um, about cloning the Jupyter notebooks and modifying the, the, the notebooks, um, to clone the Jupyter notebooks, I think we have a, a video to do to to show that, who, um, uh, which uh, shows that. So we can share. Perhaps uh, I will share the link to this video uh, on the on the chat later. And modify the Jupyter notebooks for my own purpose. Yes. Uh, I don't know if I can share my screen, but it's not so complicated. Uh, when we um, we propose you to to make this, it's just to uh, select your uh, the, the, the to enter the the, the boundary of uh, the your region of interest, or change the some dates uh, in the in the file you want to uh, uh, to update. But okay, if it's not uh, so clear, uh, we will. Take into account this uh, this uh, remark and comment for the next time. Okay, and perhaps we will provide you uh, a short video to to show you how to do that. Well, uh, I would not... like. I would... Yes, Sorry. please, Marta. No, I would like to add that it's not that uh, that uh, mediator. I think to to know and to understand uh, the first time how the Jupyter notebooks work. And how to like uh, one thing are the examples that are ready to use, and you can run the cells, and it's uh, it's that part is good, and it's fast to understand. But then all, all the modifications and all the personalization part, I would say, and I agree with uh, with the participants that, that that's more difficult. I'm not sure that uh, Chris. Uh... You are ready to to sh to show some example to perhaps later in the in the session if you can just uh, show you, uh, one of your Jupyter notebooks and say okay here in this cell you can modify this date or this region of uh, interest just to show yeah um, I can do I will, that uh, I will try to find later the the video uh, to understand how to clone the Jupyter notebook on your on your uh, Jupyter environment. Don't worry for that. Okay, use the HDA, and so there is a um, there is a, a video for that. Any information of other, but not not in the list. Okay, don't hesitate to 
to say on the chat where uh, you 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 had difficulties. Okay, if it's not on the list. Okay. And connect to my account. Don't hesitate to contact the directly the user support to have an answer to this kind of issues. About the difficulties of the Jupyter Notebooks, I would say that they are a bit too easy, they are a bit too difficult. There are exercises for all levels of difficulty. Okay. So 25% find this is, we have a, a good range of uh, difficulty in these uh, notebooks, but 9% uh, uh, find this is too difficult. Okay, we have to adapt. Okay, in the future we have to adapt and to have uh, first uh, first notebook for beginners and okay, try to uh, to adapt a, a little bit more. But it's not it's not bad for our experts to see that there is a good level of uh, difficulty. About the topics uh, of the Jupyter notebooks and according to my needs, I found them relevant, useful, interesting, out of the scope. Okay. So it's quite good <laughs> to this kind of, of, uh, of information. Uh, so congratulations, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yes, and then we can we can just uh, say yeah, rem as a reminder that for those that, that might not be that interested in climate, but they would like to find more more data or more examples on, on atmosphere or ocean. We had also these uh, previous, tra previous trainings that were more focused uh, on other topics. So I encourage everyone to, to take a look also to this training, but also to the previous ones, uh, because maybe if uh, you can find, you are finding something more specific on other thematic areas, you might find it there. Yeah, and, and also if you are interested in climate, but you would like to see other other things, then uh, let us know and we can we can provide that. So, yeah. Okay, good. Um, next, to improve your material, you should propose. So, tutorial videos for all the Jupyter notebooks, practical exercises on how to use virtual machines, session to manipulate Jupyter notebook, download, upload, clone. Okay. Okay, now we know how to improve our material and uh, and answer your your requirements. Yes, I think uh, um, I'm also in charge of the the, the training uh, workshop and training material for the Copernicus Marine Service, and uh, uh, we provide Jupyter notebooks tutorial videos, and I know that it's very useful for all the uh, the people. Who, who wants to understand what the experts is uh, is doing on the on the Jupyter notebook? So I think in the future we will try to provide some some videos for all the notebooks and practical yeah. exercises on how to use virtual machine. Yes, it's it's also complicated for for, for people to know how to to launch the first uh, virtual machines and to uh, to. Uh, to, to use uh, their their dashboard on the computational resources. So, uh, yes, in the future we will provide some exercise. Yeah, Chris, you want to add something? Um, yeah, just to say that um, it is our intention to produce videos of all the notebooks. So this will be done, um, you know, at some point, hopefully in the near future, and then I think we can upload them um, as you know as um, as we have already done for the ocean. Uh, notebooks, I think um, it would be good to to have them also for the climate ones. So yeah, yeah. So thank you for that because it it will be very uh, useful for us to to improve our our way to to make this uh, training workshop. So thank you, Vincent, for that. <laughs> Thank you. I'll leave you the floor, Martha, to introduce the, the, the first topic. Okay. 
Thank you, uh, Vincent. Uh, so now we are going to, to continue with the general questions that we have uh, received or that are uh, common, uh, commonly asked. And it's going to be uh, Fabrice and myself that we will uh, provide um, some answers about, uh, about these topics. So... Sorry, Martha. And this is like a warm-up to, to, to give time to the participants to, to ask a live question, okay? The debriefing session is, is uh, the purpose of the debriefing is for you to ask live questions. So do not hesitate to, to ask your question in the chat. Thank you, Marco. Thank you. Uh, so exactly as, uh, as Vincent is saying, uh, this session, the idea is that we provide a general answer. But if you want something more specific or more detailed about uh, some of the topics that we will mention about Wiki, you can use the, the chat and, and ask uh, your questions there and we will provide more details. So, for example, I will start with the first one. Um, we always say that uh, you can download data with Wikio, but uh, sometimes for, for some uh, users, it's not that clear where this data is uh, going to be downloaded. So, um, when you go to the to the Wikio catalog and the Wikio page, uh, I can share my screen maybe. Let me see. I'm going to show, to show you very quickly how, how what I'm referring to. Okay, so can you see my screen now? Uh, Fabrice, can you please? Yeah, uh, we can we can see your screen. Thank you, Chris. That's fine. Uh, so uh, yes, sorry. here you have. Uh, no, it's it's fine. I just uh, needed someone to to confirm. Thank you. So here we have uh, the data viewer, and where we go to, to where we can go to layers, and uh, we can uh, search uh, some of the of the data sets that are available. I think this is not a very difficult part from what we saw from the survey, like finding data or searching for data. It's not, apparently it's not one of the most difficult parts. So I'm not going to, to focus now too much on this, but let's say we would like to work with era five, for example, right? And here we have um, the option to download. So we can have a subset and download. And when we click on this, and you have a much more ex longer explanation on other videos, uh, this, uh, with this download, um, you can select all the parameters of your interest. And here you have two options. So when you click on show API request, it provides, provides you a, a, a subset of, of the data that you selected. And then if you click to, to download it, like uh, to request data, then this uh, data set, this, uh, this, uh, parameter, this data set with the parameters that you selected, it goes directly to your local computer. So you will find your date, this data that you selected in the, in the downloads folder probably or in the desktop or wherever you decide to, to store the files that you download. So um, I, think, um, I think that's uh, all I, I can say about this question. Um, please do not hesitate to to ask uh, in the chat something else if you need. And and for the meantime, I think we can move to the next question. Can I just add one thing, Marta? Um, when you're when you're downloading the data, when you're um, selecting the various parameters, you have to select at least one of each option. Otherwise, yes. it doesn't enable you to download. So. Um, yeah, so you'll see a little red star when it's like a mandatory to select at least one of each um, of each parameter, or you know, date range or time period or whatever. Yes, exactly. I, I forgot to to mention that, but I, I think it's it's very useful to for everyone to to have this uh, clarification. So thank you very much uh, for this comment, Chris. Um, I think it's it's very important because sometimes it seems that it's not working or like uh, it seems that the data is not there, but it is there. It is working. It's just that maybe. From from uh, as a user, we are not uh, fully uh, completing all the data that, that is needed, and we have to, of course, pay attention to these uh, red uh, red symbols uh, next to the titles. So, 
that that's uh, very very useful to for everyone to remember. What, what's the aim of creating a virtual machine? So, okay, uh, you can choose to download directly your, your data on your own computer if you want to to, uh, uh, to make study on, uh, on your own computer, if you have a, uh, the environment to do that or at your, at your office. But uh, if you need a, a more um, powerful uh, computational resources, you can access to a virtual machine. And so, if you want to process uh, big data or long range of uh, uh, time series of, uh, of data, sometimes you need more uh, resources to do that, to, to store the data and to, uh, to compute the data. So, virtual machines are, uh, are available to do that. So, uh, for people who don't know, and, and in the future, we, we saw that in the, in the in the survey, in the future, we will try to make some uh, some training workshop dedicated on that. Uh, I think uh, there is a, a short webinar uh, scheduled um, uh, for the the, the, the beginning of uh, next year uh, to to explain how to use virtual machines and computational resources. So stay tuned to the uh, to the news and uh, event of Wikio to have this kind of uh, information. Uh, okay, uh, so the next uh, question uh, is uh, about the, the type of plant and especially if uh, the virtual machines are not available in the free plan. So in general, okay, when we present uh, the when we present the, the the two plans that are available at WikiO, and when we talk about the virtual machines and the options that you have available, we say in general no. But in fact, you have uh, some trial periods. Um, I uh, we have added here a screenshot, but maybe it's it's too small. I can just uh, quickly go to the website and show where is this information so that you can also um, check it uh, from your from your computer if you want. So as I was saying, um, the virtual machines are usually not not considered in the free plan because actually they are they are uh, uh, planned for the advanced options. However, um, we have, uh, as it says here, we have some options below, and the, the screenshot that you could see on the on the slides is this one about processing environments. And if you pay attention at the last line of this table, here you have uh, the option of uh, having a trial period that, period that can go from one to five months, depending on the capabilities that you request. So I would say that the, the larger and the and the more more powerful the the virtual machine is, uh, then uh, sorry, the virtual environment is, then you have uh, a shorter period of trial. So that's why in the delight, uh, so the the here the the environments are classified uh, from the most uh, like the one that has most uh, capabilities, uh, a larger RAM. Uh, a larger block storage and so on um, is the L, and the smaller one is the light, and that's why the light has a longer uh, uh, trial period, and it will depend on the type of project that you want to that you want to to run on on Wikio, uh, that you will that you might need uh, one or another. So uh, you can also ask in the user support if uh, what what are the exact parameters that you need because uh, sometimes you might think that you need a lot of processing or that you need a lot of storage and maybe in reality you don't need that much. So I, I recommend that you that you kind of think about it before selecting one of these plans. And especially if you just want to try out, um, you can just, uh, I mean, I think it's very important to, to pay attention to this uh, trial period, period part because uh, you might want to try it for longer and you have the option to have five months, but maybe with one month is enough for you and what you really need. 
is a uh, is a lot of storage. So we have like uh, the order of terabytes in the case of the S uh, size of the environment. And well, here you have all the information. I think we also commented on the types of plans in other events and other webinars. But of course, you can you can answer about it if you have more questions about or the type of plans or the type of virtual processing environments that are available. Then I would like to, to say that um, you can always have an essential account. And later on, if you decide to, to have a virtual machine that you want to try it out or that you want to completely change to an advanced plan, you are always you can always do that. You don't need to create a separate account. You can use your essential account and ask uh, for an upgrade. Chris or Fabrice would like to add something about this? No, no. Just, just to say that it's very easy to to change uh, the the uh, the t-shirt size and your your environment uh, if you need more uh, more RAM or more CPUs. Uh, you can change easily the uh, the, the different uh, uh, t-shirt size of your 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 offer. Don't worry about that. So you can test one. Uh, environment and change for another if you need. So don't worry for that. Okay, thank you. I think we can go to the next question. So is there a R kernel on the Wiki or Jupyter? No, for the moment uh, we only have the Python kernel, uh, but uh, don't hesitate to, 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 to ask uh the user support to have this kind of uh, of uh, library or, or kernel or tool available on your uh, on wikio because in the future we will uh, uh, take into account your 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 request for the next update of the of the service so if you need our kernel ask for that Okay, I think we have uh, one more question about the general topics. Yes, uh, so can we use the plots created in Jupyter Notebook with Wikio in research papers and concerning the use of Wikio results in publications, how that should uh, that be analyzed? Uh, so yes, of course, you can use the plots created in Jupyter Notebook on uh, in research paper. Um, if you uh, If you have created these results just on the Jupyter Notebook with uh, the essential plan, which is the, f uh, the free plan, uh, you have to credit Wikio, saying this study has been conducted using Copernicus Wikio. Wikio. But if you are uh, created these uh, results uh, from your virtual machine and your pay uh, plan environment, there is no obligation okay, to do that. But in any case, uh, for all users of uh, Copernicus products, you have to provide clear and visible attribution to the Copernicus program. So this is two different things, the use of Wikio platform and the use of uh, the Copernicus products. Okay, so for the Copernicus products, you have to always uh, communicate uh, uh, to the public the source of the Copernicus pro products, saying, okay, generating, generated using Copernicus Climate Change Service Information or Copernicus Marine Service Information, etc. I hope this is clear. Well, I'm sure it is, and it's something uh, very useful, especially for researchers and scientists that would like to use the platform. But then this these kind of questions come up: How can I refer to to the to Wiki or to the Copernicus data or so I, I think it it will be very useful. Thank you, Fabrice, uh, for the, for this uh, explanation. And I think now we have. Uh, I think we will move later to the Q and A part. So yes. uh, yeah. So now I I'm going to to present. Well, we already have we had Chris here for a while, but uh, Chris uh, will explain us uh, more details about uh, the Q and A part uh, for the Jupyter Notebook environment and notebooks in general. So, Chris, you can... Thanks, Marta. Yeah, so um, 
should I should I wait for you to change the slide or should I sure, you okay, can great or should I share my screen or okay okay I'll, I'll, I'll let you change the slide um <clears throat> okay so this question what is the difference between Copernicus and Sentinel data um so Copernicus is uh, is an, an EU program for um, for Earth observation, um, and within that program there are um, Sentinel satellites. Okay, but not only. So um, the satellites. Um, so there's a Sentinel satellite data, which is a subset of uh, Copernicus and Copernicus data and information products, because in addition to the Sentinel satellites, you also have um, other data, and you also have value-added products. So the value-added products are created by the services such as the Copernicus Climate Change Service, the Copernicus Marine Environment Service, um, the, the, um, the Atmosphere Monitoring Service, uh, the Land Monitoring, and the um, Emergency um, and Security Services. So there are information products provided by these services uh, in addition to the central data. So, um, so that's really the difference between Copernicus and Sentinel data. Maybe we can go to the, uh, the next slide. What are the data sets available for climate change from Wikio? So the, the Copernicus Climate Change Service provides uh, a number of different uh, products. These include uh, reanalysis, um, so like a kind of um, uh, data set um, with um, um, observations as well as uh, um, model data. Um, and Copernicus, the Cl Copernicus Climate Change Service uh, provides access to this data. Also, they provide um, predictions for the future in the form of seasonal forecasts um, or climate projections um, and also climate indicators. These are all available from the Copernicus Climate Change Service, and some of these are, are already available on Wikio, and eventually they'll all be available on Wikio, but this is still work in progress. So for the moment, there is uh, um, some kind of, let's say, sample data sets from the Copernicus Climate Change Service available on Wikio, and these are the ones you can see on the slide here. So there's some climate indicators, um, such as water quality and uh, quantity indicators, um, reanalysis, uh, some of the reanalysis data from, for example, Era 5, um, and, and some of the seasonal forecasts. Um, but this is still work in progress. So I think there are still some issues with the, with the metadata. Um, so we would ask you for the moment to access this data through the, the, the climate data store, which is still the official access mechanism uh, of the Copernicus climate change um, uh, data. However, um, there are the, uh, the advantage of Wikio is that you have data not just from the Copernicus Climate Change Service, but also from other, um, other sources. So, for example, you know, there's, there are ocean data sets, atmosphere data sets, um, and these are you know, still considered useful for, for climate change. Um, so, and the, these data are available through Wikio. So, I hope that answers the question. Uh, can data set from Wikio predict climate changes? If so, can you, specif let me just, let me, can you specify the range that it can predict accurately? Um, so the data set on Wikio and uh, also the data on the, from the Copernicus Climate Change Service, um, they can specify, uh, they can predict, well, they can provide um, predictions uh, into, the, into the future um, with uncertainties. Um, and accuracy estimates, uh, and these in the form of uh, seasonal forecasts, so forecasts for the next season uh, for various different parameters, um, and also uh, projections into the future. So the seasonal forecasts are based on, um, uh, you know, uh, initial state, and um, they, they just um, provide a prediction for the next season, um, and you can specify the lead time and so on. Um, the climate projections are more in the longer term, so for the next, um, let's say, until the end of the century. Um, and these are based on, uh, for example, different um, scenarios, um, uh, RCPs, so uh, for different kind of, uh, you know, um, emission scenarios. And these are available, um, and they come with 
so they come with with um, uncertainties, uh, and you can use them um, to have an estimate of uh, of the future. Okay, so maybe we can go to the next question regarding the CDS toolbox editor. Um, okay, is this tool a mix between Jupyter and Wikio? Which of the three tools should I use? For example, to extract era five time series for a list of given coordinates and download the result. So that's a very good question. There are different tools available, and these include, for example, the the CDS toolbox. So this is a um, a toolbox to facilitate processing of data from the climate data store, um, for example, era five. And there is also Jupyter. Um, and uh, and so what I would say here is that these are not three separate. I mean, Wikio, for example, for, um, Wikio is uh, is a place where you can access the data. Also, the Climate Data Store is a place where you can access the data. The CDS Toolbox is a tool, and Jupyter is a tool. Okay, so there are um, there are um, places where you can get the data, and there are tools for processing that data. And Wikio provides access to many different um, data and information products. The CDS provides um, access to only the climate change service data. Um, so, but the CDS uh, is currently the official access mechanism for the Copernicus climate change service data. Some of this is available on Wikio, but not all of it yet. In the future, it will all be available on Wikio. Then, when you want to process this data, you can use Jupyter. So on Wikio, there's a, there's a Jupyter Hub uh, service, which you've been using for the last few weeks during this training. And there you can, uh, you can create a Jupyter notebook, you can write code, you can process the data if you're familiar with Python. Then, if you're a bit less familiar with Python, you can use the toolbox, which is still based on Python, but it has some libraries to make it easier for you to visualize and process this data, create plots, and also create applications. So you can use the, tool, the CDS toolbox to very easily create a, uh, an app, which um, you can also make it an interactive app. Um, and you can do that writing not very, without having to write a very, very long, you know, um, pages of code. You can, there, there are libraries to make it easier for you to do that. Uh, whereas if you're a bit more familiar with Python, then maybe you prefer to go directly into Jupyter and write your own script for visualizing and processing data. So really the, the difference between the toolbox and Jupyter are just the, um, you know, the, the familiarity with Python and the, uh, the libraries that make it easier for you to, uh, for you to handle the data. But I would say Wikio is not uh, I mean, Wikio is a place where you can access the data. Also, the CDS is a place where you access the data. So I hope that answers the question. Maybe we can go to the next one. Um, okay, this is, this is uh, still uh, part of the answer to the previous question. Okay, and that's the end. So if you have any further questions, then please put them to the chat. Yes, thank you, Chris, uh, for, for this explanation and about uh, the, the answers for these questions. Um, as uh, you were saying, it's very important that uh, everyone that has a question, a comment, something that you would like to add, something that you would like to ask, please do that in the chat because uh, now it's, it's a good opportunity, it's a good chance here. We have the experts now that can provide you uh, uh, very uh, good answers, detailed answers for, for what you need to know, and especially uh, in climate topics today. Um, also, I would like to, to remember and I would like to, to say that there are no uh, easy questions or difficult questions, like meaning that don't be, don't be afraid of asking something that might seem too simple or too complicated, like this, uh, this is not important, uh, like uh, we answer all types of questions and in case we don't have the answer right now, we can just uh, answer later and if it's something that you think everyone knows it or should I ask it or no of course you can ask it it's now now the moment 
So after, after saying this, I would like to introduce you to, to Amin Alamrani. Uh, he's an expert uh, from CS Group and he's working also in the, on the user support of Wikio. Hello, Amin. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Okay, so I will uh, answer the questions uh, uh, that uh, I have. So first question about Sentinel downloaded data which is the extension of files. Uh, so I'll say that uh, Sentinel data are organized through a folder structure. Uh, so there are many extensions in play. There are uh, metadata, which are in uh, XML format, for example. You can find bulk files when uh, concerning uh, ancillary data. And more uh, importantly, uh, uh, GP2 images or uh, JPEG 2000 uh, in the case of uh, Sentinel-2. So there are, uh, these are special uh, JPEG uh, images, so to say, because they contain also geographical data, meaning that each pixel contains uh, the shades of gray, of course, but also the geographical information that gives the longitude and the latitude corresponding to the pixel. So uh, these images, even if they, are, they have the uh, JP2 extension, do not uh, expect them to be opened using a casual Windows uh, file opener or something like that. You need a special software like QGIS because of the uh, geographical information that is included in them. Um, I mean, maybe I could just um, yeah. add something. So, um, as I mean said, um, you know, for, for Central Two, it's in um, it's in JP two format, and yeah, this is um, it requires. I mean, they're quite big. Heavy files uh, for Sentinel three. Um, it's uh, it's NetCDF format, which is uh, you know a similar kind of scientific um, format. Um, and uh, I don't know about Sentinel five and and, and, the, and the others, but um, but yeah, the, the the actual data files um, are in, um, in in it can be in various different uh, different formats. Um, but for Sentinel three, it's actually quite easy to. Um, Process the data using X-Array, um, as you saw from some of the example notebooks. Uh, so there's some good examples in, in uh, processing this data. Thank you. Thank you. I was talking just about Sentinel-2 as an example, but uh, thank you for uh, for the other Sentinels. Uh, a second question. What is the size limit for uh, a download in a single request? So officially, there is no limit fixed by Wikio on the size limit of the request. However, it uh, all depends on the resources you have and from which source are you downloading the product. So if you are using the harmonized data access to get your product, uh, downloading huge files may make, make, might take some time. Time to reach the data and obviously time to download the data, which depends on your internet connection speed. A uh, better and faster way to uh, download data to subscri subscribe to the advanced plan and the re request the Elasticity DPI in the registration form. So the Elasticity Cloud is provided by a public cloud pro provider. And uh, note that if you choose uh, the Elastic uh, Cloud, you will not benefit from a trial period, just to, to know that. If using Elasticity, you will already have some processed data available directly instead of requesting them fully through the HDA uh, harmonized data access, uh, which will make the download quite faster. The drawback of requesting uh, data this way is uh, that this data may not be very updated. So using the harmonized data access has this huge advantage of downloading the data from the source, but maybe no not as fast as accessing them directly through uh, uh, elasticity. Um, and uh, the last question, uh, so can I, an essential user access to the virtual machine by freely upgrading the account? So of course we can uh, upgrade the account uh, by moving from the essential plan to the advanced plan. And uh, so to do that, you have to click on dashboard in the upper banner on the website and choose the uh, plan size. Uh, choose the plan size that corresponds to you. 
So there is a button uh, upgrade that allows you to to choose which plan uh, corresponds to you. Once you have selected the, the plan, uh, we will receive uh, in the support uh, a new ticket uh, to uh, upgrade your uh, your plan, and you will have all the information to access these. Uh, uh, resources uh, so we will have the virtual machine with the configuration you need so there is a trial period corresponding to each plan size as uh, was uh, stated by uh, marta on an earlier question and uh, note that these trial periods are not uh, fixed they can be extended on a case-by-case -case basis so it all depends on your uh, uh, on the use of your uh, of your uh, virtual machines, so it's all negotiable. We just have to to uh, to write to the support, and uh, we will see uh, on a case by case basis how to deal with this trial period uh, thing. So that's uh, all for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Amin. I I hope everything helped to clarify. Uh to clarify the, the questions and the, the issues that people are finding or the, the problems and, and all of that. Now we are, we are going to continue um, with the Q&A itself. So we are going to display now the live questions that are being asked on the chat. I encourage everyone to, to answer, to ask the questions again, because um, we are we still have a little bit of time so do not hesitate to to write your questions in the chat in the meantime we are going to start to start answering them so this question can you add a message at the end before download to indicate that some fields are not are not completed uh, this question is related from what we explained before uh, about the the data selection of the catalog. Uh, when Chris mentioned uh, that you need to select uh, all the parameters that are mandatory, uh, would you like to to give uh, um, um, more details about it, uh, Chris? Yeah, I think um, I think I'm just trying to try to remember what happens. Maybe we can have a look to see what happens when you mm -hmm. don't. Um, when you don't um, set all of the fields. Um, maybe I could share my screen and try that. Um, because I just want to see what. OK. Um, OK. Can you see my screen? Yes. OK, great. So then if you go to data, and let's say we want, okay, well, let's just go back. Let's just go to this one. And we go to download. Okay, so here you have the download uh, form. So let's just take one. Uh, sorry, Chris. I, I, oh, yeah, sorry. If I... You can If you can move up a little bit the, the yes, exactly. The, here, where is they? Next to the red symbol, we have this comment, choose one, at least one. Choose at least one, exactly. Yes. Yeah, but if you don't choose one, exactly. then, then it's still, okay, in this case, it's still uh, request data. No, nothing happens. Okay, when you, when, okay, so just nothing happens. So there's no, there's no warning or anything, but at least you do have a, a, um, you, you do have a message here saying choose at least one. So here I selected it, so the message doesn't appear. But if I miss, I miss another one out, then um, a warning message appears at the variable to say choose at least one. So yeah, so that's that, that's the the only message that appears. So if you forget to choose one, then nothing happens, and you have to scroll up to see you know which one is missing. So I'll stop sharing now. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I think it was clear. Thank you for for showing us what what happens if you don't uh, you don't select all the data or you if you forget something. So I think uh, that was uh, useful. Is there anything that you would like to add, uh, Fabrice, about the previous question or? 
Uh, no, no. Okay. Okay. So we move to the next one. Uh, is downloading Copernicus data via Wikio faster than using Moto client? I think perhaps this question is more for, for Amin. Mm -hmm. uh, Vincent, can you? Yes, I agree. Maybe Amin can help us with this. It's a, it's a good okay. question. I don't know yeah, if uh, yeah. we already made uh, some tests on that. Um, so um, unfortunately, I don't have the uh, answer to this question. I'm sorry, but uh, I will uh, advise you to uh, contact the support. So support uh, at wikio.eu and we will surely uh, uh, answer this question in a very brief, uh, in a very brief time. Yes, of course, um, this, this can happen uh, that we don't know the question right now during during the session, but you can, I mean, we'll see. I'll contact the user support and we can investigate better the answer instead of providing something quickly now it's it's better that we contact exactly. other and find out okay great we have uh, i think one more question um it's, uh, can we regret down or upscale reader data on any of these tools mentioned Maybe Chris uh, would like to add something to this. Or Chris, um, can you switch on your mic and your camera? Chris, are you there? Yes. So I was um, I was set as a um, as a participant, I think, and then uh, re put in as a presenter. But I didn't yeah. really, I didn't press the right button. Sorry. <laughs> um, so that for this question, so the answer is you can. So you can you can you can do whatever you want. Um, but obviously, I mean, it depends on the level of sophistication um you you want to you want to go to because um for example when you're doing um downscaling um it's it's quite a it's, it's quite a complex process um but you can use the you can use tools such as x-ray um it's very good uh, and other python libraries are very good um for for, for, for grading data regrading data you know interpolating upscaling or downscaling um Normally, um, the, the products that we provide to you, such as reanalysis data, are already gridded data, and a lot of effort has been put into uh, gridding them, you know, taking the, the observations and the models, in, filling in the gaps in space and time. So we would consider this um, to be, you know, data, um, kind of analysis-ready data. But um, one a big application of um, the reanalysis data or um, data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service is um, it, it is to downscale it because this data is global um, and it has a certain resolution. But maybe you have in situ data, you have your own uh, data from a certain area, and you want to um, downscale uh, the data um, to a high precision. So if you have the expertise to do this and you have the, if you have the local data to do this, then, then of course you can do that. So I hope that answers uh, your question. Mm, yes, I, I hope so. Uh, I think uh, we close soon this session. I think there are not, no more questions at the moment. If you want, before to, to finish this session, I can quickly <coughs> make uh, uh, the live demo I promised. Okay. Uh, on the chat. Yes. yes. <laughs> to, sh to show how to use the, the HDA. Yes. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so quickly. Okay. To share okay. my screen. Thank you, Fabrice. Okay, so do you see my screen? Yes. yes okay. I got, uh, I got my my video to to uh, uh, to keep some uh, bandwidth to to show you this demonstration. Okay, so uh, on my screen on the uh, left side you have the Wikio uh, uh, viewer to access the data, and on the right side you have the uh, my Jupyter notebook, my Jupyter Hub environment. Okay, so I have a, a short, um, very short code. You see, it's very short. I, I will try to uh, to show you an image, uh, and I will take uh, my uh, uh, HDA uh, request on the uh, uh, on the viewer. So now um, I will use the the this uh, data, so I, I, I take the, the data from, from the catalog, okay, I search the data with the, uh, the number, this uh, ID number. Now I have this data, so this is profile data. I can use a uh, log scale or not. I prefer to show you without the log scale because you will see the same shape on my image uh, I will provide on the on the Jupyter app, okay? And now, okay, I will um, I will select my area of interest. So I click here and now, okay, I select this region, okay. As you can uh, see, I'm already uh, connected on my uh, Wikio account, so I can directly download the data or access uh, the IPI request by clicking here. When I click here, I can copy uh, the area of interest uh, boundaries directly on this box. Okay, this is the same coordinates than this uh, uh, area. And then I can choose to uh, the, the date and uh, uh, I can choose to have the same date as a, in the timeline. Okay, okay, and I just put one day. So I will try to subset uh, this area of interest, this parameter on this area and uh, for the day uh, I selected here, okay? And now, or I request the data to download the data on my computer, or I can choose to show the IPI request. When it's like this, I just have to copy my IPI request. I go on my code here, and I have a part where I can paste this, so as you see, it's the same uh, area of interest. Sorry to, to interrupt, but I think, at least myself, I cannot see how you copy and paste, like the screen is frozen for me. I don't know if it's happening. Yeah, also, also for me, yeah. Okay, now, oh, now, now we can see the API request. Exactly. Okay, sorry. No problem. I sorry for the uh, connection. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so, I copy this on my Jupyter notebook. Okay, as you see, this is the same uh, data set ID here. I copy this data set ID on my notebook also, on this line. Okay, and now I'm ready to run the notebook. So I'll start here. So as you must know, in the Jupyter notebook, when you have a star between the two brackets, it means that the computation is running, okay? The code is running. 
And when you have a number, uh, the cell has finished uh, running. Okay, so that. And now you see I used some functions on the IPI to access uh, the data. Check. Download data on my own directory on this folder. Okay, download complete. I'm, now, I'm sorry, with this please. function, I will. I just I, I want think... to see. Sorry for interrupting is... again. I think it's it's frozen again. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, at least I cannot see the downloads completed. I think. Uh... Well, I'm not sure if you can do something. Like the last time I told you, you could, like we have seen uh, the API request. I'm not sure now if, uh, okay, now we can see it. I think. Okay. Sorry for that. No, 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 no. Tell me, tell me. Okay. I don't hesitate to interrupt me. And now, uh, so I launched this uh, uh, function to read. Uh, my data. Okay, so I have information on what is inside an ETF, and now I will plot the variable. And you will see. When it will be finished, that I will have the same image than uh, my request on the view. Okay. So as you see, I succeeded to make make a, a request on the data viewer and the catalog and thanks to the hda api i made this uh, uh this jupyter notebook and uh, uh, i have the same image than the the uh the, the um, what i would like to to, uh, to have on my uh, my computer okay i have the same image here and here Okay, and sharing. So sorry for <laughs> some problem of connection. Uh, yeah, no problem, Fabrice. It's it was a little bit unclear, but uh, I guess we will provide soon uh, on our YouTube channel uh, an explanation uh, video of how to use the the API. Okay. Yes. Is that with okay. you? Fine. Marta, I think, and Chris, I think uh, this is time to close this debriefing session. We don't have much more questions coming, so uh, I would like to thank you, all of you, the experts, for the huge work you did to 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 make this this wiki or training uh, focus on climate data products. Uh, Quite a success because we have a lot of participants in round one, and we were uh, around 70 unique participants for this briefing session. So uh, we had the, the, the pupils with, with us at the moment. So uh, as we said, don't forget to to clone your work. We will explain you afterwards uh, in, a, in a summary PDF document sent to all the participants, where you will find all all the questions asked you during the, this debriefing session and how to continue your work as well. So uh, after what you will find, um, you will have... Yes, tell me. Vincent, sorry to interrupt you, but I have the, the answer to this question about the, uh, the, the, 
the fact that uh, the people have to uh, to copy their Jupyter notebooks to save them. So you have to save the Jupyter notebook you modified directly on your computer. So to do that, you have to right click on your when you have your Jupyter notebook on the Jupyter Hub and choose download. Okay, to download on your computer. And after the uh, 7th of December, you will be able to upload again on your new Jupyter Hub environment. Sorry for that. <laughs> Thank you, Fabrice. Thank you for, no problem. Thank you for this explanation. Um, as I said, uh, I think this is, uh, if I remember well, this is the 17th of December. One of our partners, Space Tech, will training uh, Wikio training of uh, getting started with Wikio. So you will receive an invitation for for this this training as well uh, after the uh, after this session. So experts, if you want to add something, this is the time. And or else, I would like to to thank you everyone for being here. And uh, and that's it. Marta, Chris. Thank you also from my side. So I hope the, the training was interesting. And um, yeah, I hope you'll be able to continue working in your own time uh, on the notebooks. Thank you. Thank you. As well, uh, don't, don't forget that uh, we have uh, excellent user support uh, at Wikio. So if you have any question, do not hesitate to ask them. Huh? Thank you, Amin. You are the participant, but uh, uh, thank you very much, and uh, I hope you will have a, a load of questions afterwards, after this event. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.